Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversation at Homes program. I'm Pia Senaroy. Before we are joined by our guests today, I want to let you know that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization that relies entirely on donations to provide emergency assistance and free educational programs to SAG After artists. This conversation is made possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters. Over the past year, the foundation has given over $7 million in COVID relief to more than 7,500 performers. If you are a sag after artist and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for the support. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Sujata Day, Ritesh Rajan, and Anna Kaja of The Movie Definition, please. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi. Pia. Hi. Um, it is a gloomy day in LA, but that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna brighten it up today uh, by discussing this wonderful film that came out uh, earlier this year on Netflix. Uh, so I'm gonna kick it off with uh, writer, director, and star Sujata Day. Uh, Sujata, please tell us kind of what inspired this story. What inspired you to write this story? Yeah, I mean, I'll take it all the way back to fourth grade because that's when I won my class spelling bee and. <laughs> I went on to regionals and I lost in the first round on the word radish and I spelled it with two D's instead of one. And that moment has obviously stayed with me for my entire life. And I was in a sketch writing class, Upright Citizens Brigade, UCB sketch writing class in 2015. And we had to write sketches every week. So one of my sketches was entitled, Where Are They Now? Spelling Me Winners. And if you look up the Spelling Bee winners, they're all doing amazing things. They are winning world poker tours. They're NASA scientists. And <laughs> the punchline of my sketch was that one of these winners turns out to be a young adult who hasn't really lived up to her potential. She's still living at home in her mom's basement. She's, uh, <laughs> she's just being a bum. And so in... 2016, I did a Sundance screenwriting lab. 2017, went to Sundance for the first time and was uh, inspired by my friend Justin Chan's movie, Gook, to just get out there and write and create and shoot my own movie. And so I started writing the feature film version of the script in 2017 and uh, I wanted to explore not only the, the premise was that it was a former Spelling Bee champion who grows up to not live up to her potential and she's still living at home. But I wanted to answer the questions of why. And I decided to place those answers within her familial relationships, her relationship with her father, her relationship with her mom, and especially her relationship with her estranged brother. And that's how I was inspired to write the script. And that's how it came out of me. I, I love that it came out of a sketch, by the way. I think that's one of my favorite little snippets about this because it it's ended up becoming such a heartwarming, beautiful um, you know, movie that toes that line between drama and comedy so perfectly. And it makes so much sense that it's come out of a very comedic place. Uh, Ritesh, I really want to ask you about the character of Sonny, who is, mm -hmm. is so endearing, but you know, he's also just he's really struggling with some you know, some some very debilitating mental health issues here. And I just am very curious to know kind of what about that character drew you to him? And then how did you go about researching and preparing to play him? Uh, you know, it was it was pretty easy for me to make a decision to be part of this movie, just because I don't always get the opportunity to play the most co sort of complex or layered characters. And so once Suj sort of gave me the lay of the land and was like, I want you to be a part of this, I, I was really excited to be able to, you know, be able to play this character that is just multifaceted and sort of dealing with all of these sort of um, conflicts, uh, both in his personal life and then also with his family. Uh, and for me, you know, we didn't want to sensationalize the, the, the illness, you know, him being bipolar. Suj and I spoke at length in terms of how we wanted to be portrayed. And in terms of my preparation, um, I took kind of, I, you know, it was a multi-step sort of process. I looked at it sort of clinically. Both my parents are doctors. A lot of my friends are doctors. I, I had access to a lot of text 
research, um, talking to patients, talking to physicians, um, and sort of getting all of their experiences. And then also talking to Suj, talking to her about her experiences, you know, in terms of dealing with mental health and all of that stuff. And then focusing that um, within the lens of a South Asian family, right? It's like, we can all deal with these issues. Now, how do South Asian families deal with these issues? And now how does this issue translate to his relationship with his sister and his mother specifically? And, you know, that's what we kind of wanted to highlight. Um, Anna, you are playing the matriarch of this family. And I found <laughs> your character so compelling because, you know, um, this family is dealing with the loss of their father and husband. Um, and, and it's still pretty raw. And your character, Anna, has to, Joya really has to kind of manage grieving as a wife while also still being a mother to her two adult children who are also kind of struggling. So I was curious to know kind of, you know, how you tapped into where she was uh, at this point when when this movie is being made about her. Right. Well, um, I think, first of all, I was just drawn to it because it felt the movie felt fresh and familiar. And so did Jaya, the character Mm -hmm. of Jaya to me in the sense that uh, you know, I've played a lot of Indian moms and which is sort of ridiculous. You can say like, why would someone be labeled as an Indian mom? But that's really what I felt I had played on TV and film. And I had never seen a character like Jaya um, in uh, what I'd auditioned for in television and what I've played um, and, and what I've seen out there. And so, but yet there was something about her and her struggles and the entire family's dynamic that also felt very familiar in the sense that I could relate to it um, as far as, you know, uh, my understanding of certain nuances of South Asian culture, but also it's a universal story. It's a universal family story um, and about a family struggling with grief, um, struggling to with generational differences, struggling to understand each other, struggling with, um, cultural clashing within themselves and struggling with mental illness. And so I just found her to be incredibly complex and that there were just so many things for me to dig into. Like I was so excited to play her um, also because, you know, she also because she, you know, you get to play a dying woman, but then also you have the last laugh. <laughs> Like, you know, you also, you also get to play a not, a not dying woman. Like, <laughs> like I, lo- I love Spoiler. that. Spoiler. <laughs> and as far as tapping in, I mean, I think I just, uh, I always try to start with the things that I feel I can relate to or the, the you know, love, the b- basic human emotions that we all can tap into, you know, love, protectiveness thinking you know best (laughs) for the people you love and desperately wanting them to do what you know is right for them. You know, Jaya Mm -hmm. desperately knows what's right for her kids. She's certain of it, right? She's absolutely Mm -hmm. certain of it. And they just need to do, if they would just follow her program, everything would be fine. That's how she sees it. And it comes entirely, I think, from love and from her just wanting to be able to relax and enjoy her life and not worry about her children for once. So, Mm -hmm. um, and to enjoy her children and also to, to, to enjoy them as individuals and also to enjoy them, to enjoy the relationship they have with each other Mm -hmm. that she remembers. So, um, those are the kinds of things that I, I tried to keep at the center of my focus when I was playing her, if that makes sense. Absolutely. All of you have mentioned, you know, that you haven't been offered roles like this. Um, And I want to ask you a bit more if you could expand on that. As actors, you've been doing this for a while. Um, But tell me a little bit about that kind of struggle to find roles where you can go and play incredibly sort of layered, complex characters in leading and and sort of lead supporting roles as well. Um, Sujata, I feel like, you know, this was a big part of you writing this, you know, for yourself and your friends. But, you know, what is it that you've struggled to find in the industry so far? And then what did this movie offer all of you uh, as actors? Yeah, I mean, I've been out here for a while, just auditioning, you know, a few times a week for different projects. And 
And I started to notice that there was a pattern in the South Asian characters that I was being asked to audition for. And, and it was very strange, you know, at first it was, you know, you have to do an accent or um, wear a certain type of clothes or even wear a hijab, even though I'm uh, Hindu and not Muslim. And, and it was just interesting because it felt like uh, Hollywood was seeing us through only one lens. And th that stuff is part of who we are and part of our the characters that we can play, but there's also so much more. And I was just not being offered to audition for those other roles and they were not being written by anyone. And so that was my main, you know, like you said, my, my purpose of writing the film and getting it out there was that I wanted to write the dream role that I wanted to play, that I wasn't being asked to audition for, that I wasn't being offered. And what was really fun for me was to also write these other characters surrounding Monica, like Sunny and Jaya, and giving them really fun, I want to say beefy, is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> It's early. It's it's, it's, it's it's beef, you know. We got the fans got beef with each other. It's in the same. Yeah. So, the meeting, Double entendre. Yeah, and so it was the reaction that I was getting when when Tesh read the script and when Anna read the script. That's that's the kind of gift I want to give. Continue giving to actors as I as I you know, work on more projects in the future. And, and, and it's exciting. And it's coming from, you know, a place of a South Asian American being the creator and writer of it. And that's, that's very important in this industry. You've got to speak from an authentic point of view or else you will continue to write similar characters over and over. Absolutely. Yeah. Ritesh and Anna, do you have anything you want to add to uh, I think, you know, Suj covered it beautifully, but, you know, it's it's about opportunity and having the right opportunity and treating our culture kind of as a monolith. And, you know, we're, we're all from different parts of South Asia and how different all our cultures are. You know, I'm Tamil, Suj is Bengali. A lot of the words in the script, I didn't know what they were. Right. But someone from the West has no idea. Like they just they don't they don't have a, a clue. So both kind of just as an actor, and as, an, an, as an artist, you know, there, I have a desire to show people our culture and not be, um, not that I was ashamed, but just have the opportunity to show it uh, in its truth, in the way that it exists in, in, in a, uh, you know, Indian American family um, and how everyone sort of goes through these universal struggles. Um, back to what Anna was saying in terms of, you know, connecting, finding the yeah. human emotion of love and pain. And we all go through this. So why not tell our stories through that funnel? Everyone absolutely. else does. <laughs> I'm, I just found my, absolutely. I just found myself, you know, like I said, playing Indian moms and literally like that, that was how I was even labeling it in my head because it seemed to be, that's all there was to mm -hmm. this person. She is an Indian mom to Perhaps the younger lead, who sometimes is Ritesh, because I played his mom before, <laughs> which gave us a great foundation um, to start this film. Uh, but I mean, she's a human being, right? I mean, if you, it, these are human beings, and yes, they are mothers, and they are fathers, and they are sisters, and they're brothers, and parents, and and children, and all of that. But I mean, Jaya is an individual. You know, she she's totally unique and unlike anyone else, and. The truth is, if you've met one South Asian person, you've met one South Asian person. We're all different. We're all, <laughs> each of us are different, unique people that embrace different aspects of our, you know, uh, you know, South Asian culture, whatever part of it it might be, and, and Western culture, we all have different relationships with. And, and it just kind of, you know, the, we've all seen the story of the young a South Asian person who wants to be more Western or what, you know, wants to embrace the Western and their parents are like sh shaking, you know, shaking the finger, you know, and, uh, and, and yelling and being very stern and only having, and being very like, you know, only having one point of view. And, and that's just how it has to be. And wanting them to only think about, you know, the country they came from or the culture they came from. And it's just so much more, I mean, sure, I guess those people probably exist. 
but it's so much more nuanced. I mean, I, I know for a fact that none of the three of us sitting here uh, live that, you know what I mean? We, there are as we all have experienced aspects of it, but it's, yeah. there's so much more to it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I just really loved that. And I loved that Jaya had her own agenda that was not just connected to her children. You know, mm -hmm. she, she, by the end of the film, she's, you know, meeting with her girlfriends, dancing, laughing, you know, she's having a life, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was really lovely to sort of see her as a person on her own outside of just kind of that fat, familial context. Um, I, I also just think I'm Bengali and, you know, I've never really seen our, you know, stories portrayed in, in Western films, um, you know, and, and I think especially the Bengali Hindu story, it was really beautiful to see like them doing pujas and, and speaking the language as well. Um, but I also think this is an incredibly American story, a very present day American millennial story. Um, and I think what I love about this, and I'd love, Sujata, I'd love for you to like talk a little bit more about your your thinking behind this is, is how I think this movie is part of redefining what it means to be American in the grand scheme of things, right? I think there's such a strange idea about, you know, um, when you have brown skin and you're kind of labeled Indian American, that Indian comes first, the American comes second, and you're otherized almost immediately. What I love about this film is this is an American film. It's set in Pittsburgh. You know, it's, it's you know, characters who've grown up here and lived here. Tell me a little bit about kind of, you know, bringing that element to it, make it making it, you know, a real kind of cultural, you're not bringing in like stereotypes. You're really kind of just harnessing the reality and the authenticity of lived experiences. I think that goes back to the films that I was inspired by in terms of making this movie, which mm -hmm. was Duplass Brothers movies, tons of indie films that I grew up loving and also specifically sibling films like mm -hmm. You Can Count On Me and The Savages and um, Skeleton Twins. And so pulling from those and watching those and I was like, oh, how come people who look like us never get to be in movies like this? <laughs> I want to, then I'm going to write my own. And um, someone recently tweeted that uh, definition, please reminded them of Mumblecore films. And I was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was really excited that they, they made that connection. And um, like you said, it's a very American story and it just happens to have a South Asian American family in the center of it. And we see them, in a small town, which we don't see in the media very often, you know, the faces that look like ours are generally in the cities and, mm -hmm. and doing, you know, Wall Street jobs or um, science things. And, and it was just really exciting to me to portray something that, that I had grown up around, mm -hmm. that I come from a small town with, with a non-diverse population, but luckily there were a couple temples around me, Hindu temples. And so I honestly did grow up with a huge Indian immigrant and first generation community. And that's who I was hanging out with on the weekends. That's who I was taking Parthnatyam dance class with at the temple. I went to Hindu temple summer camp in Lake Erie. And, and part of us growing up was just having this great mix of cultures as opposed to having to choose one or the other. We just had the best of all the worlds. You know, I was cheerleading, but I was also, you know, taking part in them. And so I think it was really great that I could do both. And um, all of our parents, like Anna mentioned, um, all of our parents in our community, they were all really cool and very open to us going to dances, going to the prom, like hanging out with our friends. And I wanted to, I had never seen any of that portrayed on screen before, just yeah. us being, and then the conflicts and issues we're dealing with are more, you know, like Anna mentioned, universal, as opposed to specific to what we like look like or specific to our culture. So that that was really important to me to to, like you said, craft a very American story 
with faces you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. I think it, I think so many of the films that we've all loved, especially when we go to Sundance uh, and in the independent scene, um, you know, they're incredible films, but they don't usually feature people who look like us. And so I think it's wonderful to to finally get to put yourself in the narrative <laughs> and to give us that representation that I think I've definitely been like, you know, yearning for for so long. Um, I want to also ask a little bit about Pittsburgh. Uh, you are from Pittsburgh. You went back to film in your hometown. Uh, tell me about that. What was it like to just go back there? I imagine it could have been quite surreal, actually, to go out to places that you're very familiar with and, and actually set your movie there. As I was writing the film, it was all written into the script already. So, mm-hmm. yes, it was surreal, but it was expected. This was always where I was going to shoot the film, which was my hometown of Greensburg. And I did not imagine how accommodating it would be and how fun it was going to be to shoot within that community. And even from, you know, location scouting to finding the hotel that all the actors and the crew were going to be staying at that happened to be walking distance from a sheets, which was (laughs) really exciting. I got to introduce my entire cast and crew out of town to sheets and they just fell in love with it. And Tesh can tell you more about that. (laughs) Sheets, if you see this, they should sponsor me. Sponsor me, Sheets. And and there were some really great stories that came out of shooting in Greensburg. That's one that just pops up in my mind is that we were shooting a night scene. It was going to be 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. on a weekday. And we called the Pittsburgh Film Office and we said, hey, we're trying to get a permit to shoot this very late, loud scene at night. And the Pittsburgh Film Office said, oh, you don't need permits. And we were like, what? <laughs> Because if you're trying to shoot anything in Los Angeles or New York, <laughs> first of all, you were paying like five to ten thousand dollars and you need a permit. Yeah. And we were like, OK, they said you have to just get permission from the people who were there. And I was like, OK, so I hand wrote eight notes saying, <laughs> hi, we'll be shooting this scene. Please call my producer. Here's his number. If you have any issues or questions or problems. And I taped them on the doors to my neighbors up and down the street. <laughs> And then we got two phone calls and one was, uh, oh, what is this movie about? What's going on? What's going on? And and the the second question was, can can I be an extra? (laughs) And then as we were shooting this scene, which is is the scene where uh, Richie and I are hooking up in the car Mm -hmm. and Sonny comes out and causes an interruption. And right before we started shooting the scene, some of my neighbors came out, <laughs> popped open lawn chairs and cracked open a beer and they just sat <laughs> down and they were watching us like they were watching a movie. And I was like, this is so classic Greensburg. Like this is definitely, you know, the epitome of small town America. And it was it was so nice and so supportive. I love we that. also they- shot it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I love that they came out just to watch you make out with each <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or to watch Ritesh in his underwear. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, I'm yeah. thinking because there was actually a gigantic light down the street that was supposed to be like replicating the moonlight. It was actually right. very yeah. large. And I was like, oh, they're all coming out to see what's going on over there. And then, you know, I just was ignoring the fact that I was in tidy whities and she was <laughs> having sex. And socks, tidy whities and socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good scene it's a very good scene sorry Anna you were saying something oh I was just gonna say you know we shot all of the home scenes which are most a lot of them Mm -hmm. in Sujata's family's home that they (laughs) they currently live in and it it was just like it's a really incredible experience I mean you know that was basically the set dressing and Mm -hmm. and so I don't know how to explain it but I feel like I've I feel like I'm a part of Sujata's mm-hmm. family. I feel like I merged with her family. I, they don't feel that way because they went to a hotel, you know, but, <laughs> but, but I feel that way because it was like, you know, I'm cooking in, in Toby's kitchen and, and, and I'm in her living room and I'm, I'm using this and that, like, it's just, it, it was so, oh God, it was great. It was, you know, talk about how the set informs your work. Mm-hmm. And if, if the set mm-hmm. designers did a good job, you, it kind of really helps you like get into it. Like this was, a whole other level, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's totally true. It's funny because we would have these emotional scenes or these comedic sort of scenes in these moments. 
And then you turn around in the living room and then you see a baby picture of Suge. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God, this Aww. is real life. You're like, this is real yeah. life. This is, yeah. we're here. <laughs> and it was very important <laughs> because we didn't have much time too. So right. all the help yeah. we could get was obviously, um, you know, just totally uh, invaluable. So that's for I, sure. I love this. I feel like it's, and, and you can feel that like personal element in this film so much. It's just kind of exuding. And, and all of you bring so much love to your characters and to the world that Sujata has crafted. Um, I, th- I think it really shows. Uh, I'm curious, um, Suj, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit right now. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to have them talk about you. Uh, Ritesh and Anna, I'd love to ask a little bit about kind of your experience working with Sujata as a first time writer director on this film. Um, what was, and I know that this is like a very sort of short shoot. So what was that experience like? What did she bring to, to the behind the scenes of it all? So honestly, honestly speaking, I've been on many sets, both from like very small to millions of dollars, massive budget movies. This was one of the smoothest sets I've ever been on in my life. That being said, obviously behind the scenes, there could be fires, but everyone did their job to their best of ability. And um, as an actor, I was protected and had the greatest scene partners in the world. And mm-hmm. the only thing that Suge that I you know, would always make me laugh, I'd be like, did we get it? And Suge just like, yeah, we got it. We got to move on. We got it. We got to go next. <laughs> Do we have like, a lot of money? Like, we didn't have guess, a lot of time. I, guess we got <laughs> I think it. I think Anna also felt the same. Way. Like, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> you know, but this is after maybe doing it twice. Like okay. it wasn't yeah. like we did it like eight times. Yeah. It would be like one. She's like, uh, oh yeah, let's do it again. Oh right, yeah, we got it. Let's go. <laughs> she, she knows when she's got it. Yeah, she knows. but. You know, you know? I, I, was, yeah. I was very lucky because I had these two great women supporting me. And so I knew I could trust them both in front of the camera and behind the camera. And it was mm-hmm. it was lovely to reconnect, you know, again with Anna as my mom and this time to, yeah. to dive deeper into that. Um, so yeah. it was an incredible experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's just absolutely <laughs> true. One hundred percent true. I mean, I, I think I was like, what? We're going to shoot this movie where? for what budget, for how many days, 10 days, like how many scenes, like, you know, I thought I was going to be walking into a dumpster fire, but I was ready for it. And then it was exactly the opposite. I mean, I, I kept waiting to see the freak out. I kept, I kept waiting (laughs) to, to see the stress. I kept waiting to see Suge stressing, you know, or where it all falls apart. It just, it didn't happen in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that was incredible. And then, you know, to the point where I just kept asking her, I guess, like three times, like, are you stressed? I mean, not really. Like, you know, but I, I prepared, you know, is there anything wrong? <laughs> well, I mean, right now I'm just focusing on acting. <laughs> okay, right, right. Like, uh, <laughs> like, but it really, what I learned from Sujata, she just said, I just over-prepared. And then she like, you know, she had a team she could trust. Mm-hmm. She'd walk through everything with her DP, as far as I understand. And, um, and it was just, I mean, I learned a lot from it. And um, like Tesh said, like there was just, it was so smooth and we were on time and we were never really running late. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, just a testament. And then, um, yeah. And then of course, like Sujata would just be like, that was good. First take, that was great. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I get another one, right? Okay, one more, but then like. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you really just knew what when you got it. It sounds like you just knew and you were like, let's go. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's how I am with self-tape auditions too. I'm like, okay, I got it. Did it once, got it. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Well, on the <laughs> flip side nice. of that, Sujata, it sounds like you didn't show any of the cracks behind the scenes, but but were there or for this experience, did it go a lot smoother than you expected? What what was that experience as writer direct like? It was it went really smooth. There were cracks, but I feel like we as the team, like Anna and Tesh said, I mm-hmm. I put together an amazing team and and I was very excited about Cameron Fife, my producer who's worked in uh, on like six or seven feature films before Brooks Ludwig my DP who mm-hmm. I had recently worked with on a feature called blowing up right now mm-hmm. 
And, and I noticed that he worked really well in a short amount of time. And I was like, okay, this is, this is exactly what we need. And the entire team around us did everything possible to make sure things were smooth. Uh, Ricky Herrera, my AD was amazing. And so I, I was overprepared, like Anna said, but the best part about being overprepared is when things do happen. So for example, we were shooting a scene one evening um, in the living room and I get a text from Cameron saying that we had just lost the bar location for the next day. And I'm acting and directing at the same time and I'm in the middle of these scenes. And so I kind of in between setups, I would go into the kitchen and be texting my friend in Pittsburgh to see if he had a friend in Greensburg who had a bar. And so these are the these are the texts that I'm getting back and forth. And, and I didn't want to let anyone in the cast and crew know that there was this this thing happening. So I just, you know, continued being yeah. in the scene, mm. continue directing the scene. And then in, in an, it, within the hour, um, Cam and Caitlin, our production designer, had gone out to the bar to kind of scout it and they were sending me pictures. And I was like, this is great. This is awesome. I mean, if we have it, you know, book it. And then it took about two to three hours to kind of fan the flames of that fire. But but my whole attitude in life is just, you know, if a problem comes up, don't scream about it. Don't, um, you know, complain about it you just have to do everything you can to fix it and so that's that's the attitude that I um you know persevered in producing the film and and being within when we were shooting and and I also took a lot of care of myself I I slept a lot (laughs) sometimes the the cast and crew would go out to dinner and stuff and I would I would go to dinner but then I'd be like okay peace like I gotta go I gotta go she she wasn't hanging out with me in the beer locker of sheets whereas where you could find me every night after shooting and walk in freezer closet filled with beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it sounds like a pretty good place to be. But yeah, it's not, I mean, it sounds like you were doing the smart thing by, you know, <laughs> taking care of yourself, getting sleep and, and putting out all of those. I actually thought I was doing a good job at getting sleep. But then one of the last, like the day eight or day nine of shooting, um, Vivi, our makeup artist, like pulls out those like, sleeping masks like those <laughs> and I was like mm-hmm. wait, you wait, mean wait. the things they use on me every time I get into makeup care <laughs> and I was like wait 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 I thought I looked restful and she's like oh, no, no, no. it's just you know it's just to make you feel better you know it's, it feels nice on your face and I was like, you feel better I was like, is, this, is she gaslighting me do I have bags under my eyes right now Oh, well, you looked great on screen, which is the main thing. Um, you also put together an incredible ensemble cast here as well. Some really, really funny people in there. Um, tell me a little bit about bringing those people into your world as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those people are my friends. And that was really fun to just be able to text my friends. And, you know, uh, Parvesh China is someone that I've known for a while and he's hilarious. He pops up in everything. And when I saw that we had a fun little manager Patel brothers uh, role, he was the first person that I thought of and I texted him and, and he immediately said yes and came out for the day. And then Sonal Shah's character really excited me. So Dr. Ali, you know, we were actually looking for someone older and, um, And that's who I pictured. And we reached out to a couple different women and, and, you know, they passed for various reasons. And then I, I thought of Sonal. I've also known her for a while. She's best Mm -hmm. friends with Parvesh. So they kind of come, come as a twofer. And, and I was like, oh, she would be an interesting choice as just like one of the younger friends of the mom character. And so I, once she got on set, there was this, horniness there between her and Tesh's character that I, was like, <laughs> I was like oh wow this is really great and amazing and we should play into that and and we just started playing with that and that was that was really awesome to actually watch Sono shine in that mm-hmm. role and and I'm yeah. really excited for her and I just um hope she gets more work out of it because yeah. she's she's also just like a kind awesome human being 
so very talented. And then we had, you know, Jake Choi's character, very Mm -hmm. interesting, Richie. We were looking at white boys for that role, to be honest. We were going to go the route of, okay, uh, let's try to attach a celebrity. And uh, there were a couple of people in mind that we have connections to. And none of them felt exactly right to me. And I was just holding off. And um, then I met Jake. We had presented at the East West Players Gala, where mm-hmm. I also met Anna. And I briefly, I met Anna. And, and I was like, oh, this guy, Jake, like, he's pretty hot. And I was like, <laughs> like, I feel like he could, he could pull this off. And I texted mm-hmm. him and he said, yes, immediately. He didn't even read the script. And I was like, I mean, you might want to read the script. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, whatever, I'll do whatever. And I was like, okay, great. Amazing. <laughs> so then he came on board and he was absolutely Amazing. perfect. Um, another character that was really fun to cast yeah. was Krista. Uh, I had always thought of Lelaine for that role. Actually, mm-hmm. nobody else. We didn't go out to anyone else. She's a friend. She's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And I know she's talented. If you've ever watched Lizzie McGuire, she plays Miranda on the old series. And and I reached out to her and she's like, ah, she was kind of hemming and hawing. I don't I'm don't, don't, not really acting anymore. And then she read the script and she was like, I think I have to do this. And I was like, I think you got to do this. And she was all sweet and she was so great. And so we got to, Mm -hmm. we got to put together this really amazing ensemble cast where, I mean, all the parts fit together really well for the whole. Yeah. I love that. Well, one last question for uh, all of you. Uh, The movie's been out since January now. So you've had a little bit of time to see reactions as people come to it. What has been the most surprising reaction for for each of you? I think for me, the most surprising reaction is uh, from people outside of our community, because Mm -hmm. I really did make this for us. And (laughs) and it was something that I I had never seen before. And it was the movie that I would have loved to have watched when I was 15 years old. And it's it's really it's really touching that people outside of our community community our south asian american community are reacting it to it in the way that i i could never have dreamt and they're connecting to the characters they're connecting to their stories they're connecting to the town mm-hmm. and so that's really exciting love that with that um <clears throat> honestly my biggest reaction were of those of like kind of my parents friends the older generation um, who are doctors. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them, or a lot of them are psychiatrists, psychologists who really appreciated not only what we did as a film, but just like they were so impressed about how accurate it was and how real it felt to them, which was something that I was really proud of because I knew we were going to smash it out of the park with our friends and, you know, mm-hmm. younger South Asian community. But to get some, you know, crotchety old auntie to be like well, that was good you know like I was like okay we got something here you know and then That's the first funny. time where I really felt like okay I think we have something special was when we screened it at my manager's office and he's not Indian or anything right and so mm-hmm. he uh I could hear him like sniffling at the end of the movie yeah. <laughs> and we got him on the whole sibling thing and I was like all right we, we got we the, that right. connection, that universal connection that sort of transcends the culture and where we're from and the customs. Oh. It's like, that's what we're shooting for. And, and we accomplished that. Love that. And Anna, for you? I don't know if it's that I was surprised, but I've been really touched by the word of mouth referrals. Like, I can't tell you how often. I'm still, yesterday, I got a text from a friend who was like, I made my whole family sit down and watch it last night again. Like, uh, it's there's this sort of word of mouth spreading that's happening Mm -hmm. and it means it really does mean so much yes to the younger generation which was kind of expected but like to the older generation you know a a friend of mine's like you know my my wife's parents are uh from bangladesh you know so i sent it to them they sat down they told all their friends then they had a screening at their house like you know it it means so much um and that's just really touching yeah, to be part of something like that, you know. 
absolutely wonderful. I want to just shout out to the WhatsApp auntie groups that are <laughs> spreading the word. Because my, my mom is part of this kind of Greensburg auntie group that spreads to the Pittsburgh aunties, that spreads mm-hmm. to the Chicago aunties, the Houston aunties. And somehow they, they, have, they, have loved, they have loved the movie and they've been spreading the word. And, and I'm like, wow, this is grassroots marketing at its finest. So, yeah, shout out. I mean, auntie approval is the hardest. It is. You guys have earned it. And it makes sense. You, you've, just, you've made a beautiful film. Each of you portray your characters so beautifully. And, and it was so... Um, heartwarming to watch, uh, very emotional. And I really actually, for the first time in my life, can say, oh, I feel like I just got represented on screen. I think that just happened. (laughs) So uh, that alone, you know, this movie, I think, has a very, very special place in our hearts. So thank you so much for being here. On behalf of the SAG After Foundation, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences, process and craft with your fellow performers. Thank you. Thank you.